Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm going to be reviewing Fila colored pencils and I'm going to be coloring an image of a dragonfly from my coloring book, Coloring Dreams. The first thing I did in this drawing was color in the entire area of the lily pad that's behind the dragonfly with number 61. It's kind of a, uh, a bright spring green. And then after that, I followed the lines that I indicated on the paper, I'm sorry, on, on the picture, and I kind of darkened them up and made them a little more noticeable. So it looks like there's a little bit of texture, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm darkening up those areas that separate the sections of that lily pad with number 45. So the first thing I want to say about these pencils is that they come in really beautiful colors. There's 152 in this set and it came with two pencil sharpeners and a color chart that has the numbers of the pencils and also names of the pencils. So that was a really nice addition. Now just putting down two layers of, of these greens, um, you can tell they're very nice but it's hard to layer. Uh, well, I can't even say it's hard to layer. It's harder to layer than maybe a polychromos. It feels like they're a little bit slippery, a little bit quicker than the polychromos or even the um, Prismacolors. Now that yellow is number 25 and I use that because the dragonfly is going to be not quite muted, but it's going to have yellow and almost the same green in the wings. And if you use the green, um, or it, I should say if you use the color in the wings that's, that's in the background of the picture, it gives the illusion that the wings of whatever you're drawing, whether it be a dragonfly or a bee or a fly, it gives the illusion of being translucent or transparent. The set itself comes in a white cardboard box that contains four plastic trays and the pencils are lined up one after another. And the thing that I liked about the way they set them up is that they set them up in almost color order, which I really like and I appreciate because I can see the slight differences in the nuances between yellows or reds and if they're all over the place sometimes it's confusing when they're right next to one another it's a little easier on the eyes and it's easier to pick out the colors that you need. So the, this set also comes with 10 metallics and the lead shows on the back of the pencil similar to the Guanghui Hero pencils and the Prisma colors. I would say the lead size is smaller than the Prismacolors and about the same as the Hero or Guanghui pencils. At this point in the picture, I took a darker green, which is number 19. It's kind of a, a teal or um, like a, a very true forest green. And I decided I was going to make a bit of a shadow. And I kind of went in lightly and tentatively at first because I wasn't sure I was going to love it or like the results with the pencils because I'm not really familiar with the pencils. Um, and what I did there was add another shadow of the white stem over to the right. I figured um, that's how the light would be hitting it. So I made it uh, not quite diagonal, but a little bit off center to the stem. Now you can see that I grabbed the white pencil because I wanted to blend that slightly darker green shadowy area into the rest of, of the plant and see how that worked. Um, I would say that the white pencil to me was similar, actually very similar to the Hero Guanghui pencil and it worked, but I would say it didn't work as well as my favorite blending pencil, which is the Polychromos White. And 
for what this set cost, I'm not complaining. Um, I, I just, I like to compare sets and tell you what I know about the other sets that I'm familiar with too. So I decided that I was going to go over the rest of the lighter green to see how it blended together because I would say that the pencils are an interesting combination of creamy and possibly a little bit waxy. Now that being said, I can't tell if they're wax based or oil based based and I looked them up on the web and if anybody can find out and tell me you can put that information below, I would really appreciate it because I have no clue and there's no it, there's there's no information on the box and as far as I can tell, no information on on the web. So it is currently a mystery to me. So using the white pencil did blend in that look that not quite exactly smooth paper uh, I'm sorry that not quite smooth um, pencil look on the paper it did make the colors look a little bit brighter and almost gave it um, a watercolor look now at that point what what I was showing you I, I did the top area with with the white pencil and you can see how much smoother it actually looks. So then I was looking forward to doing the rest because it definitely it definitely does improve the look of the pencils. Like I said before this set does come with two sharpeners and I did sharpen a couple of the pencils a couple of times and they did work and they didn't break the tips but they didn't make a perfect point. One of the one of the points kind of crumbled a bit and they're I can't say they're bad sharpeners because they did sharpen like I said but they weren't the sturdiest sharpeners and the wood did grab a bit so I was kind of hesitant but I did want to sharpen what I needed to be sharpened using the pencil sharpeners that that were contained in the kit and they're okay but if you have another sharpener that's more sturdy or something handheld or even electric I think I would I would recommend that over the ones that were in the kit but they they worked for me and they would probably work in a pinch this was a good picture to draw as a demo image um, especially with a new set that I'm reviewing because I had to draw very large areas or I should say color large areas and I also had to color very tiny and detailed areas. So what I learned from doing that was two things. First of all, th the pencils don't hold a point as well as harder leaded pencils. Um, Polychromos are my favorite to hold a sharp point and yet still remain creamy feeling somehow. I don't know what that special magic is, but they have they're they're really they're really really special in that in that way. And here's the other thing. I had to make some fine details here and they were they were hard to use for the teeny tiny details because they they don't hold a point as well. Now doing these fine details was was okay because I didn't have to go super precise. Um, so I would say it was it was fine, um, but it wasn't outstanding for details. Now what I did like about this color and. Let me tell you what that is. It's number 115 and it was kind of like the darkest blue teal, like an inky teal. And I love this color. Um, and I felt like I had to be a little bit careful because it felt so creamy that it felt like it was going to just get all over the place, but it didn't. Now, what it did do was 
blend very nicely when I put other colors near it. Um, like this front part of the dragonfly, I kind of used it toward the back of that of that front body area. And then when I added other colors in the front, it just blended so nice and it maintained its vibrancy. So yeah, the bigger areas, um, the pencil lost its point a little quicker. I would love to do one of those tests that, um, oh, I, I'm going to try to remember her name. What is her name? Let me go check. Hold on. Oh, it's another YouTuber and her name is Super Ray Dizzle. And what she does is test how long the pencils um, work. Basically, she colors in page after page of white paper, just wearing down the pencil and sharpening it and sharpening it. And it's amazing how different they are. And certain pencils last longer. So you might want to check that out. Um, and that's why I was I, I was saying for this one, it would be interesting to see because the point did wear down on on the bigger area, and it, it wore down on the on the littler areas too. But it's very apparent when you're coloring in a large area. Now that blue that I used, I'll be using over and over again. Um, the lighter color was 123, and that yellow was the same that I used from before 25. I made little details on the back of the dragonfly's body with with the lighter blue and the darker blue and I blended them in with the, with that yellow color. Now you can do whatever you want on on the back of the dragonfly. I thought those colors were complementary to the to the uh, lily pad and I did want to see how these pencils worked in tinier places and on top of other colors. I you I've I've used a couple of other sets where if you put a color down and you try to put another lighter color over it. Now, of course, the blue is slightly uh, more intense and more pigmented than the yellow, but it still showed up. And I have used um, a couple other sets where you couldn't even get the color down at all unless you used um, some type of paint thinner or turpenoid. That's that 123 again. I'm adding a little bit more detail. I added slightly darker areas around the edges of the dragonfly tail so it would give it the impression of being slightly rounded so it didn't just look like a, a flat image. If you If you have something cylindrical or roundish uh, the darker areas uh, make that make that part recede so if you put the the darker areas on the outside of something thin um, that area looks like it gets recessed and then the lighter part stands forward now I'm starting the wings now certain parts of the body and it's almost imperceptible on this because it's it's such a tiny little area but I leave the body visible through the wings so that gives it a transparent look and I'm also putting some green in the wings and I'll add more green a little bit later because it adds it adds to the look of the wings being see-through um, very light and airy and reflective. That's 118. And I'm kind of going back and forth um, because I want the wings to be similar. They don't have to be identical because they would be reflecting light differently. And just moving so quickly in nature that you wouldn't be seeing them as identical. 
So I, I don't have a problem with them being exactly the same, but you want them to be close. This is 123 again. Now there's a whole lot of detail on these on these wings. And I'm not trying really to stay within the lines too much. Um, there, there will be certain areas where I'm filling in like little more detail areas, but for the most part, I'm picking generalized areas because I want there to be the impression of iridescence. And if you've ever looked at an oil slick on top of water, even if it's just one drop on a puddle of of water or in a bubble after you blow a bubble there's all these moving light patterns and the colors sort of blend into one another and that's what I'm trying to do here and that's why I'm going very lightly to begin with at least um, because I want I want to give that illusion of space and air and iridescence Now that is the exact same color as I used on the lily pad, which is 61. And that probably more than any color will make those wings look transparent. And you don't have to pick the same areas that I chose here. And sometimes when I'm drawing, I'm looking at something and, and in my head, I think it's going to come out one way and then when I when I use the pencils or when I'm when I'm actually trying to blend colors together it doesn't work out exactly right and so I try to make the best out of it and that pink that I just used was one of those examples I thought it was going to be a brighter and almost iridescent and it came out almost like red so that first color was 59 and it was okay because it did add a little pop of color and then I decided to go over it again with 133 And I still wasn't crazy about that. So I went lighter. And then that was 56. And I liked that better. That gave that um, very airy, pinky look without being too heavy and red. So I, I just continued. I, I didn't try to erase. I just tried to blend it all in. And sometimes I leave those mistakes on purpose. Just because... Well, first of all, it's like a mini challenge to myself. Can I fix this? Can can I make this look good? And they're always like little lessons. Um, I I probably wouldn't have chosen those colors together. And sometimes the the mistake um, combinations are beautiful. And so my whole long winded story there. Um, I'm telling it for a reason. Some of the barrels in the set don't match the leads exactly. Um, for example, 133 looks looks much darker in the lead than it does in the barrel. And it's a little confusing because then when you draw with it, the color actually matches the barrel. So 
you have to watch and that's probably why they put the color chart in there and the the names are already there so that's a nice addition to the set that is 123 again and what I'm doing is filling in some of those areas I'm trying to imagine what it would look like if the sun was hitting those transparent wings and trying to make the blues blend into the pinks blend into the greens you can see right in the middle of the lower wings I added a little bit of a pink blush in the center of the yellow and the and the blue and then at the end I'll show you another way to make these wings look even more in my opinion realistic and appealing there is no light fast rating on the box or within the box or on the color chart so I can't say that I could recommend these as a professional set because I don't know what they're going to do and I don't know what their light, their light fast rating is or even if there is one I, I have to say I am enjoying this set Oop, that's 59 again I am enjoying this set and I really did like the results of this of this entire picture. Sometimes I feel like I I can't tell if one thing is better than another unless I literally do the exact same thing with each set. I can tell you specifics about certain things like these these points get worn down a little bit more quickly than I would like but I can also say also I can also say that the the colors are bright they're vibrant it feels nice to use them oh, that was 118 again and once again I'm just I'm just filling in areas that I personally think look nice on these on these dragonfly wings if you if you can't get a good idea of what you want an image to look like look look it up the internet is filled with gorgeous pictures of almost everything you you can think of and I don't know what some people think but I don't think that's cheating at all professional artists use reference photos all the time for every kind of every kind of image so if you're trying to get something to look a specific way that's 123 again look it up or you can do the other thing and just wing it and see and see what you can come up with I personally l love doing that and if you're not worried about the outcome and you're and you're willing to take a, f a few chances and possibly make a few mistakes but also possibly create something that you never thought you could give it a whirl now I'm taking that white pencil again let me see what number that is in this set it's number 43 and I'm blending in those um, iridescent hopefully iridescent looking areas now I wanted to add some soft lilacs and violets and I went back and forth between number 20 and number 142 and I have to say I really like these colors especially number 142 um, it's a very vibrant yet soft lilac color so that was really nice to use it's it was very pigmented even though it was a light color and I always like to see that because it didn't feel like there was a whole lot of filler in there now what I'm doing here is going over some areas that I left white I'm going over the yellows with that with that lilac color and just adding some some more of that like oil slick look hopefully fingers crossed and then I wanted to add purple and I went back and forth between 34 and 64 
34 is a slightly darker shade to that lavender that I was just telling you about, number 142. Now here I'm starting to just fuss a little bit more. That's that same green. Um, the more green that I added, the more it actually looked like the, the wings were translucent. And looking at it now, I, I had some um, white areas that I that, that I didn't color in, that I ended up coloring in, that I wished I had left white. And it's, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, <laughs> hindsight is always 2020. So I was looking on Amazon when I was trying to find and figure if they were wax based or oil based and I saw that they were listed today for about $23. I think that this is a very nice set for that amount of money and if I was really pressed I would say the two things that were a negative at all the trays that they come in have two little finger grips on either side to be able to lift out out the trays and they're they're not that easy to use it's kind of slippery so you kind of have to reach under it um because i ca i was i was worried that the tray was going to slip out of my hands so that's one thing and when i sharpened the pencil too sharp some of them got a little crumbly especially with the pencil sharpeners that were included in in the set now here's the trick for these for these wings i i'm using a signo it's it's a uniball signo gel pen in white and i'm going over the outer line of the underneath part of both wings and I'm adding some details and very light, almost filigree lines leading into, into the wings, into that iridescent area. I think that I think that it it lends itself beautifully to the lightness and the airiness of what I would consider to be what a dragonfly's wings would look like they seem so delicate and almost like they should be on the back of a fairy so i covered up the black line and i left the black line on the front of of the wings because it gave it a little tiny bit of substance but i covered it up in white on the back and I really like the results, so I wanted to share that with with you. I'm going to also do um, fairy wings, not not in this video, um, in in a video soon. Fairy wings and bumblebee wings, because all of them are are so delicate and fine and beautiful that I wanted to see how, how they differ and how they would look colored with colored pencil. And then with the extra Signo white gel pen details. Um, I'm also gonna be giving away this set of feel of pencils that I, that I just used for, the, for this demo. So I hope you follow me because I'm gonna be doing that soon. Also, please tell me if you if you like this effect. I think it's I think it's pretty. Um, so yeah, let let me know. Tell me what you think. And once again, I wish that I could see. I wish that YouTube allowed for pictures underneath because I would love to see what you all create. Um, this picture is in one of my coloring books, Coloring Dreams. Like I said, it's also in my Etsy shop, which is um, under the name Art by Dia. You could just write it in 
all, all one word, no spaces between art by Dia. So my final words on this set are, I think that the colors are beautiful. I don't think they have as much pigment as a much more expensive set, but I kind of almost expect that. I, I'm assuming that the very expensive pencils are very expensive for a reason. The inks are more expensive and fillers are less expensive. So, you know, I think there has to be a balance there. You'll see me now going in with 123 and some of the other colors just to intensify some of the blues and the greens and even the pinks around the white. And back back to the set. Um, I think they'll they would work very nice in conjunction with Hero pencils, Prismacolor pencils, and I haven't tried them yet with Polychromos pencils, but I will be doing a comparison of these and heroes and I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm not quite sure yet. So that's that's the final result. I'm really happy with it. Um, I really like these pencils and like I said, I hope you subscribe to me. I hope you hit the button below and I hope you hit the notification bell. So when I do give away this set and post more how-to tutorials, you won't miss a thing. So give me a like if you do, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.